Hello everybody, this is Tech Stack here. Um, I just finished recording episode 3 of my Let's Play, and this will be episode 4 um, of the server version. I no more than shut down to uh, shut down my recording to, to, to uh, see how long the footage was and everything, and I was killed. I got snuck up on by this angry zombie. So uh, that's how we're going to start this episode off, is just with a... Um, uh, Getting revenge on an angry zombie. Um, I know a lot of my other players on the server here. Um, those angry zombies on a hard mode, they are just beasts. They will take you down in just a matter of like two hits. Um, they, that's with armor. Um, but yeah, uh, like I've said probably before, um, I do occasionally get uh, mobs dropping off of the cl cliff up above me. Um, that's probably where he came from because I was standing right there when I died. So, or when he. Uh, tag me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let's uh, get started proper uh, with, uh, ah, it's getting me now. Oh, we have an invisible zombie, even better. Um, let's see. Let me go ahead and log off here and come back, see if I can find this guy. And the visible, or invisible shall become visible. <laughs> and walk through. Oh, that's horrible lag. Come on. There we go. Uh, usually the server doesn't uh, lag too bad. It's, it just seems like it's uh, when you first log in or when you jump through one of the uh, linking books, that type of thing. Um, as far as my uh, other players are concerned, I'm kicking around the idea of turning on something that uh, my hosting provider um, recommends. It's uh, like a RAM disk type deal instead of storing it on a hard drive. It'll store our world on a RAM disk, but unfortunately the problem with that is uh, it does use up additional RAM of course, um, but it makes loading of chunks from the server to your client much faster from what I understand. Um, and it aids in the server's ability to keep up with all of the uh, disk reading that goes on. Um, looks like I need to turn my turtle back on. So. I will probably be doing that. In fact, why don't I log off and turn that on right now? No one else is on the server but myself because um, it's early morning. Um, I will do that and uh, just give it a go. Make sure everything's working right before I uh, log off for the day. Cause I have a few minutes here before I can uh, before I have to go to work, and we'll see how it does. Okay, guys, and I'm back. Um, as you can see, I'm down underneath my uh, uh, energy storage and production uh, area. Um, I've set up this. Uh, what's going to be a blaze spawner. Uh, I went out last night into the nether um, and I hunted down um, blaze spawners. I ended up finding five different blaze spawners in the nether. Um, took quite a bit of time, so I didn't record it. Um, I was probably going at that for, I don't know, maybe two hours at least, just searching for them. Um, but I found them. Um, when you do that, if you find five of them, make sure that you uh, wait before you take the last one, or, or the, the easiest one for you to find again, I guess. Um, I say that because uh, it takes 1,024 uh, souls on that soul shard before you can uh, have a tier 5. Um, and uh, you don't want to run out at 1,000 um, and then have to go hunt down another... Uh, spawner that would just stink um, so I went until I found uh, four other ones went back to my first one I'd found let's let the uh, lag settle here try this one more time here uh, I was getting really bad lag spikes for some reason uh, I think it was all client side because my frame rate was dropping down to like three um, anyway what I was saying was uh, you want to make sure that uh, when you do this that you don't run out of um, uh, blazes. Um, if you take the last uh, blaze spawner, am I going to run into my cow farm? No, I shouldn't. Um, if you take the last blaze spawner before you have, you know, at least 24 normal kills on it, um, you're probably going to be upset. <laughs> I know I would. Um, just because of the fact that you have to go find another set of uh, another spawner or or find them naturally in the uh, the Nether. Um, let's see, let's put this, place this thing like right there, and we'll take that there. Um, what I'm planning on doing is running this uh, 
pneumatic pipe all the way up here so that the drops from these blazes go all the way up um, and the ultimate plan is to have this thing controlled from the barrel itself um, want to be able to shut the spawner off as soon as we no longer have a need to produce blaze rods um, there we go and then put that there and then that's a perfect place for a barrel so let's go craft up a barrel real quick one of those should do oh, I already got some in my inventory um, let's get this thing over here there we go and then the plan is uh, like I said to put a gate next to it so let's do that my uh, laser uh, setup has definitely been a good choice you know I'm able to control my power setup with it and uh, all of that without issue um, let's see if I can grab that good um, do I have any build craft pipes no I do not and I don't believe that you can put the uh, build craft uh, I'm sorry the uh, red power pneumatic tubes with a gate on them that just will not work don't have any piping in there. Maybe over here. One of my chests. That's waterproof. I don't think that'll do. Nothing there. Here we go. I like the liquid duck. Wooden transport pipe. Just what I was looking for. Not actually going to be pump pumping anything out of it. Uh, just want to be able to monitor when it's active or not. Okay, and then put the gate on it. And I have to dig down quite a bit. I'm going to run the uh, red alloy down here. Let's go ahead and dig down. Um, this should be a pretty nice setup if this works uh, like I think it will. Um, reason being, you know, this spawner will run continuously. And then as soon as you have a uh, completely full barrel up there, it'll shut off no more blazes will be picked up and um, or, or even spawned I should say and then uh, you know no more lag per being produced or anything like that <coughs> and as you can see I have a transposer down here to, to, to collect the items um, if you ever go up there and you know pull a stack of uh, blaze rods out it will turn the spawner back on automatically um, and then you'll start collecting more blaze rods. So it'll constantly keep that barrel to a full state uh, is the idea behind it. Um, let's just see how it goes here. Let's see if we can simulate the thing being full. Um, let me let me drop off some items so I can get a full uh, inventory full of these uh, logs so I can fill that thing up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back here. Um, I had to move the gate actually, um, which wasn't really that surprising to me. I kind of was hoping it would work over here. Um, it doesn't though. You have to have it set up um, on one of the two inventory slots I would assume. Um, you know where it actually physically connects to the uh, barrel in a normal fashion. If you pump items uh, in or out of the side of the barrel it just doesn't work. So let me go ahead and take a stack out. It should update to being off. Okay there's on. It looks like it's off there. Okay, if I'm reading that right. Let's get this one back in here. And then let's just put on a... Uh, okay, so that is on. It should shut off. Does it take a moment for it to update? Hmm. Maybe this will have to be done with the chest. It appears it doesn't update. true. Okay, there it updated for sure. When you pull an item out, it doesn't trigger. An inventory full is the option I selected. We could reverse it. See if that works. Okay, it's full and it's saying space in inventory is not true, so it's off. Take a stack out. There should be space in the inventory. 
If they barrels are messing up today. <laughs> okay, after some testing around and stuff, I could not get the barrel to reliably work. It would pretty much, except when it's completely empty, always output a signal. Um, don't know what that really gains you. Um, but you, as you can see when you uh, have a wooden chest here, even if you have um, only one in some of the stacks, it will output a signal. But as soon as you take that last one and there's an empty space, the signal will turn off. Um, that'll do good enough. Uh, most times I'm going to be taking a whole stack out of this probably because I won't just need one blaze rod at a time in most cases. Um, so let's go ahead and finish this thing up. Um, gonna for now just run the pneumatic tube into the side of it. I'll probably just take that chest over there and place it here so I can make this a little cleaner looking. Then no one will uh, really notice anything's going on there. Um, I do like that setup a little bit better than the barrel, you know, over here initially because had all the plumbing and uh, the gate and everything showing. So this hides everything a little better anyway. So maybe it's better in the long run. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, Red uh, alloy wire down. As you can see, it does turn on, so we're good there. Um, let's get some blocks. Just pick them up this way. This should make for a uh, good setup, I think, when I'm all done here. I might have to throw a knot gate on this, because I'm thinking. Well, I can probably change the settings on the gate also. I just need this uh, signal to be on at the right state. I can't remember if it needs to be on for the spawner to work or off. Um, it might be off. Oh good, we're going to have plenty of uh, red alloy wire. And then right on across. Okay, so that should uh, power the spawner when I put it in there, uh, or the soul cage. Let's uh, go ahead and finish off the glass work as much as possible here. Uh, still doing pretty good on battery, or yeah, battery power in my jetpack. And I can break these things. They are no longer needed. Let's see, where's my... Didn't go up, okay. It's probably just because I... Uh, don't have it set proper. Uh, the inventory's full. Okay, so now if anything falls in here, it'll get sucked up right into the transposer. Um, the water should kill the blazes, um, so we should be good to go with this. Let's uh, go ahead and go on up, grab the soul shard and the um, soul cage, place them in there, and see what we get. Um, I'll be back for that because I'm going to also charge my jetpack just so it's got a full full of charge for this so I don't die uh, from fall damage or anything. So, I'll be right back. Okay, I've got this... What just happened there? Why did I die? I had my jetpack on. It was in hover mode. <sighs> I don't even know how many levels I had either. No, me, I probably had like 20 or 30. I'll have to look back at the footage. But that should not have counted. <laughs> that was... Uh, at least I didn't at least lose the soul shard. Okay. Let me get everything back where it should be. Get the glass on my hotbar. And we should be good to go. Yeah, it looks like we're in hover mode. Hmm. Well, the server just wanted to kill me today, I guess. Ooh, lag. Let me stop the recording and come. Todd, I stopped my recording and come back right away lag disappears, so it's something with my uh, recording software possibly. Or uh, maybe I'm running out of disk space again. Okay, it does appear that the spawner is turned off, because typically by now this thing would be going nuts. 
Um, let's just try it by breaking it here. There we go. They're taking damage. And that thing produces a lot of blazes. See the blaze rods are just piling up there because that thing's full of wooden uh, logs. So let's hurry up to the top and clear the, the backfill. Yeah. So now it should start traveling up here. You can see our uh, wire has turned off, so that means that the uh, spawner would naturally turn on. Go ahead and replace this wire down here. And then as soon as that thing's full, it should stop. I believe the transposer should be picking these things up because it doesn't need a redstone power signal if it's the item's directly above it there. So we should be good. Um, let's go on over here and see if we can see items traveling up. Yep, there goes the blaze rods. Perfect. Now we have a system that is fully automated as far as the production of the blaze rods. Um, the blaze rods themselves will um, continue to buffer themselves into this chest until the chest is completely full. Once the chest is all the way full, the system will shut off. So, um, in my opinion, it's a really nice setup. Maintenance free, don't have to go down there and mess with them. Um, also, uh, one of the reasons it's down there so far, and I use so much pneumatic tube and red alloy wire, is I don't have to listen to blazes dying. Um, that's a good thing for my opinion. Um, perhaps it's the cows killing my lag. Let me go take care of them for a minute. Okay. I just wanted to show off here we are, as a group, working on a uh, soul shard for the cows. Um, what that'll give us is... Um, let's breed these guys first. Um, that'll give us uh, a nice food supply and also a leather supply. Um, you know, with the miscraft, uh, being able to have books is a good thing. Uh, not to mention all the enchanting that you can do with them now that uh, that's been added to vanilla. Um, to take care of a couple of these guys. Come here. Oop, not the baby. That should be good. Let's get the meat. Okay. Um, anyway, like I said, once we get this thing up to tier 5, uh, we'll be making a community... Uh, spawner so that uh, we won't have to be uh, constantly feeding and uh, harvesting cows and all that. Just a minute ago there was a wisp out here and the frame rate's back so let me check my disk space. Uh, I apologize for all the uh, technical difficulties I'm having here today. Um, I'll get these resolved and I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, it has been uh, a couple days here uh, since last time I recorded. Um, what, uh, I guess kind of give you a quick update of what's taking place. Um, I can't remember if I had that uh, blast furnace or not last time, um, but I did go ahead and find a swamp way over uh, off in the distance by uh, Birch Forest and stuck around there until I found some slimes and got what I needed to uh, build a blast furnace so I could make some steel. The point in making all that was so that uh, I no longer have to manually feed these guys down here. Um, just threw in a, a feed station with a, a chest beside it. Um, now the only thing I really have to do is go in here and uh, replenish the uh, wheat supply nut. Um, as you can see, I've created a few more uh, redstone energy cells. I know I'm going to have up to four of them here. Um, just check on these things. Uh, see what? Yeah, they all charged up overnight. Um, I put those on and then signed off pretty much. Uh, last night, so I just want to make sure they're good to go. I uh, um, also moved the wiring around. Uh, well, let me go get my jetpack so I can show you. Um, made it a little cleaner back there. Um, before I previously had the uh, wiring sticking out in the middle of the room there. Um, now I have it all cleaned up. Um, unfortunately, when I added more redstone energy cells, I had to uh, break the uh, smooth stone I had up here. Um, but yeah. Just have all these gates uh, placed back here, and then a redstone wire or red red alloy wire running down there along the engines, and the engines are set to only run when they have a redstone signal. 
um, all of these gates are set the same, can't store energy, they turn on a redstone energy signal. So if any of these guys uh, energy cells empty, um, it powers this line completely and the energy or the energy producing engines down there uh, turn on. So it, it makes for a really nice setup. Um, it's a, you know, basically I have a 2.4 million uh, MGA buffer in my system. So if I were to start pulling out a lot of power, um, I can continuously produce uh, power to whatever machine that might be, say a quarry, um, without any drop in power output until I've ran and burned through 2.4 billion or million uh, MJ. Um, and obviously by the time I run through that, I've already created quite a bit of MJ off of these three magmatic engines. I still have plans to add some, at least one more, uh, probably several more into the setup uh, once things get going here. Um, a lot of the other guys have started to get their quarries or at least their processing center set up. I know I don't have a processing center at all at this point, so that's one thing I need to work on. Um, I need to work on a energy tesseract. Um, I do have the diamond sword. I just need to get the ender pearls. Um, ender pearls are a problem for us, but if you can see my uh, uh, waypoint over there, it says the end. Um, we did find the end. We have a book right to the end portal. We're still missing a few of the, um, what do I want to call it? The uh, uh, eyes of ender, that's what they are, um, for the portal to open it up. Once we do that, we're planning on the weekend to uh, hopefully have a group effort to kill the dragon. Um, I'd like to take part of that. I don't know if I'll be around this weekend to do that. Um, if I'm not, you other guys are more than welcome to go ahead and do it without me. Um, but if I am, I'd probably get it on camera. Um, you can see here my uh, blaze rod storage system I had set up. Previously, I had uh, red alloy wire running down alongside this. I no more than recorded the video showing this thing off. And then I thought to myself, why did I run two lines when I can have just the one? And then once I get um, a handsaw, I can cover this whole thing up and you know, nobody's going to even notice it's there. So that's what I'll be doing at that. Um, just down here, the uh, redstone pneumatic tube just stops right here, um, and then I continue on with regular uh, pneumatic tube. And you know, the redstone itself actually will connect directly to a redstone uh, pneumatic tube. So hang on one sec. Sorry about that. I had a tickle in my throat. Um, so yeah, that makes for a, an easy setup. Um, the other day I logged in and came down here. Somebody had knocked down all my torches. Um, if if that was you, that's not needed for that thing to work. That's a tier 5. It'll work in daylight even. So I don't need to leave a mob trap down there or a mob spawner down in my uh, basement here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know what else I can show you. Um, the other day I showed off the nether hub. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, the jetpack's good. Um, this design... Um, is very very bright and very colorful um, it's I think it's just too much though so I've went ahead and designed it out using Photoshop actually um, a replacement or a new nether hub for us um, also the way I've done this it should give us a few more spots and be a little cleaner as far as the uh, you know you portal end or link book right into here you're gonna be able to tell which path you're down uh, to find your base. You know, you're either on the white, the red, the oh, stupid cat. The white, the red, or the blue down there. Um, so it's just a quick way of visually knowing which way to go. Um, but yeah, these these uh, Zycraft blocks, you know, when they're used too much, it's just that. It's just way too much. So I've kind of uh, done it in a way that they're hidden, but yet they, they stand out enough, you know, with these uh, storage blocks here and uh, the bricks over there that you can visually quickly see if you were to teleport into here from someone else's base that you're not used to coming from. Oh, I'm in blue. I want to go to red to go to my base. That kind of thing. So that's the thought process behind this. Uh, still have some work to do. The red one here is getting pretty close to completion. I uh, got a couple blocks I messed up on here. Uh, but other than that, like I said, it's getting close to completion on this end here. Um, and then obviously I still have the green and white to do and then roof off the whole thing. Um, 
But yeah, once that's done, then that's a good time to start moving books in here. I would not recommend moving your books over here yet because, um, like you, as you just seen with the torch there, um, those ghasts will uh, uh, break things very easily. Um, luckily, the nether brick is pretty much gas proof. And so, are, so are the Zycraft blocks there. I was initially thinking that only these Zycraft blocks or higher grade Zycraft blocks were going to be gas proof, but I later find out that even like the storage blocks are are, are gas proof. So we're good there. Um, one sec. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, one thing I wanted to just show off. Um, I'm getting the nether brick itself two different ways. Obviously, one way is going into the nether and, and just chewing through the fortress down there. Um, the other way is uh, I collected a bunch of soul sand and nether brick, netherrack. Um, if you do that and put it in an induction smelter, I think it's three netherrack and one soul sand will produce uh, uh, two of the nether brick at a time. So it is possible to produce it. Unfortunately, because it takes you know, multiple netherrack, you have to kind of sit here and attend this thing unless you have a hopper or something feeding then another rack into the system. Um, just didn't have the the want really to build a hopper yet because my iron supply is still so low. Um, I really ought to just go ahead and bite the bullet and make a quarry and manually dump my goods off <laughs> out of the quarry or something for now. Um, just because... Uh, I'm constantly struggling for iron. Uh, the rest of the resources, you know, um, don't seem to be an issue for me as far as I have enough of them. Um, what is this? Oh, it's tin. Um, it, it's just constantly that iron. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I've used the equivalent exchange a little bit to get some iron. Oh, when I had to, but I prefer not to do that. I mean, it just kind of feels cheaty. I know it's part of the game, but I, I just prefer not to do it, um, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, there's... Oh, the Cory Cory will be the way to get it. Um, we have been making some progress on uh, some <sighs> miscraft worlds. Um, I should say, shouldn't say we. I think uh, Griffin's probably been the only one that's doing it so far. Um, he has uh, created two or three worlds, and we've got several symbols in our, our community notebook. Um, and that's also another reason why I'm kind of hesitant to, to, at this point to create the quarry. Um, it probably would be worth it in the long run, I guess, because I probably can get the diamond return back out of it eventually. Um, but the reason I have hesitation there is uh, if we have enough people that are willing to donate diamonds um, we can get a link modifier pretty easy and then uh, uh, while we may not have a need for the hub as much I think having a central place where everyone has a book is a good idea even if it's uh, in the same world um, but uh, you know just being able to have a following book is really the reason I, I want the link modifier myself um, that way, as you're you're going through Miscraft worlds, trying to find what we need, you know, as far as like a dense or symbol or something like that, you don't have to keep creating new linking books back home because you're going to drop it off in the world that you just left, um, that type of deal. So it it just aids in the uh, process of finding all those worlds that are needed to to get all the symbols and everything. Um, I know that's going to take some time to to get all those. Um, yeah, um, as you can see, this is the other way I've been getting netherrack, um, other than producing it. Um, this takes a while, as you can imagine, to just sit here and chew through each of these towers. Um, I've gone through two of the smaller towers already, pretty much. Um, then I got tired of constantly moving my uh, platform up that I'm using, and decided just, okay, let's find one of these big ones, see if they're hollow or not. They are not hollow, this was all nether brick. Uh, all this nether brick has gone into that uh, hub I've been working on. Um, I've already killed a couple picks doing this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, nether brick is not the easiest resource to find. I know I could probably, if I had my quarry, I could just come over here with that thing and you know 
safeguard the quarry itself, uh, cobblestone it up, and then uh, let it just chew through this whole tower. But uh, <sighs> I'd be pretty cautious about doing that in the nether. Uh, it'd only take one, one or two uh, gassed fireballs to blow that quarry up and then uh, kill the drop that it would leave behind. And I'd have to cry because all the diamonds. Um, but yeah, uh, this episode's probably getting long enough. Um, I know I had already recorded an end to this episode uh, a couple days ago um, when my computer was having problems. Uh, I thought that you know uh, I needed to clear up some disk space to be able to record anymore, um, but that it turned out to not be true. Uh, later, found out that. Uh, I just needed to reset my wireless uh, hub here at home. Um, every once in a while it just tends to slow down the internet connection. I think that was my problem before. Um, just couldn't keep up. So anyway, i um, going to sign off. Uh, this is uh, Tech Stack here, uh, signing off on episode 4 of season 2. Um, look forward next time to hopefully, uh, hopefully if I can make the weekend uh, Ender Dragon trip or, or journey. Uh, to seeing a end dragon slaying uh, team video and feed the beast uh, with all the mods, you know, um, I've been considering creating nano suit armor, and and uh, I'm sure some of the other guys have already have a laser or whatever. So it'd be interesting to see how uh, how quickly we can get rid of the ender dragon with uh, you know all the benefits that the mods provide, um, especially as a group. Um, he probably doesn't stand much of a chance. Although I say that. And I'll probably die like five times trying to get him. Um, anyway, this is Tech Stack signing off. Have a good day. <laughs>